Hi everybody, welcome to Munich Code Fun. I'm your host, Michael Stanton, programmer by day and the same thing at night too. But I'm here today to talk to you about the four basic building blocks of code. It's pretty simple, really. First off, you have statements. This means one line of code after the other. Things like go to the car, open the door, sit down, hit yourself in the head. Conditionals are the next type. This is where you'll do one thing or another thing. So then you might say, well, if I forgot my key, then I'll hit myself in the head and I'll stand up. Otherwise, I'll start the car. That's building block number two. Number three are loops. Loops are when you want to do one thing over and over again. So as long as I keep crying, keep hitting myself in the head because I forgot my key. You can write code like that. And the last kind of building block is actually the most powerful, but it looks really simple. It's about taking everything you did before and just giving it a name, putting it in a block called drive car. That's your name. And now anywhere you want, you can just write drive car and it will do all of those different things that you need to do in there. Like crying if you forget the key and starting the car. Functions are very powerful. Yeah. Oh, and since this is, this is in Germany, I have to say und so weiter instead of etc. That's what that's about. Okay, uh, we can use uh, different colors uh, to describe these types of building blocks. Statements we'll keep in blue. Conditionals we'll put in purple. Loops will be in orange or orange red because they'll make the computer hot. And then the functions will be in green. Und so weiter. So you can put whatever you want uh, in conditional. You could say, if the phone is ringing, then do something. You could say, if an Xbox costs more than $100, begin crying. I don't know. Uh, if mom is mad at her dog, do something. Buffy the dog. Oh, this is a good programmer. A good programmer is a lazy programmer. He says, is mad at. And you can pass anybody in there, mom or dad. Is mom mad at Buffy? Then do something. That way you write less functions. Programmers don't actually like to type. If the number of trips you've taken around the track are less than 20, then uh, the coach is going to yell at you. A lot of you have experienced that, I'm sure. You can put whatever you want in loop conditionals. So as long as the phone is ringing, it's going to call whatever you have in there. As long as you have more than $100 in your pocket, then continue doing something. As long as mom is mad at Buffy. And in the last one, they're going to yell, no pain, no gain, boy, at you. 20 times if you're a girl I, we have to change that <laughs> somehow okay um, sometimes people write code with a loop that never stops it can just happen so if mom is mad at Buffy and somebody I guess Buffy keeps irritating mom it'll never end and that means it's hung that's a computer hang you have to reboot your machine or your phone or whatever it is happens all the time bad programmers okay you don't just have to choose between two things for a conditional you could choose among many things here we see if you go west there's too many monsters if you go east there's demons it looks like the only safe direction is north no problem Here's a good programmer, a lazy programmer. 
he got away with typing less. Finally, when the person types north, then, then they get out of there and they get told it'll be boring, but it's okay. Congratulations, y'all. You're programmers now. Just like this guy. <laughs> Functions are really cool, though. Functions are the very best because they let you forget everything you used to know. You just put it in this function and you can forget about it. Maybe um, starting a car. Maybe it's really hard now. You have to start Windows. You have to log in. You forgot your dad's password. I don't know. It's hard. You can put all that in a function and forget about it. That's really powerful because people can only hold five to seven things in their head at a time. So if you want to write powerful programs, you've got to get good at forgetting old stuff you used to know. You have to always hide it. That way your programs will get more powerful. Let's check it out. So you start out writing simple functions. Okay, a function to ring a doorbell. Hmm. Well, it accounts for the fact that some doors don't have doorbells, so you have to knock. See, there's that conditional where you choose. But then you can include that function anywhere. Here we're including it in a function called do the thing. What happens? We ring the doorbell, we wait for someone to answer, we say something, a message, and then we throw a pie. What's this all about? <sighs> okay, all right though, do the thing takes a message. Oh, function save the world. What are we doing here? It looks like we're finding the guy who shot the lion. Oh, I know this guy. And if we find his house, then we do the thing at his house and we yell, this is for Cecil. So he's going to get a pie in the face. All right. We have a pretty complicated program. Ah, oh, let's go deeper. Function run my life long as I'm alive, if it's Monday, save the world. All the other days, play video games. That's pretty cool. And finally, we've reduced all of that to three lines. First you're born, you live your life, and you die. Now that's pretty philosophical, but that's powerful programming. Hiding information, bury it in functions, and that's it. Thanks for watching, y'all. Uh, reporting from Munich, Germany. We'll see you next time. Auf Wiedersehen.